I wanted to take a member of the public who had no idea that he was being targeted and see if I could make him do something completely unexpected and out of character, possibly even break the law. This small cafe was the perfect size to find the target. Rigged with hidden cameras, including a camera in my glasses, it was just a matter of time before someone came in. My idea is to use a technique called mirroring. This will enable me to have some control over their actions. The first stage of mirroring involves trying to copy the other person's body movements so that we get into sync with each other. It often takes several attempts before I find the right person. It wasn't her. Once I'm mirroring them, I'll try to lead their actions so that they're copying my actions without being aware of it. After a while, a third person appears. After 20 minutes, I've got this guy in sync with me, so now I'm going to try and lead his actions. He is now copying me without realizing it, and I'm going to try and make him feel sleepy. Sleeper agents were used by both sides during the Cold War, the ultimate goal being to control the minds of these agents in order to get them to do something illegal, which is what I'm going to attempt here. There are two things for you to unplug on the TV. The little red girl is your trigger. I pay for his coffee and leave. We follow him using hidden cameras as he walks up London's Tottenham Court Road, best known for its large number of electronic shops. The little red girl, girl is your trigger. trigger. Although the shop's manager had been pre-warned, the shop assistants had no idea what we were doing. So to avoid the police being called, I gave the TV back to its rightful owners. I was walking down the street and I saw quite a nice television that I liked in that, in that shop. And uh, I, I thought I'd pick it up and, and, and get it. I saw a man in front with the TV there and he happened to sort of be fiddling with it, looking at it. Before I could ask him for help, he had disconnected everything from the TV and he just walked out. There. Good. Okay, Nicky, as you can see, I've chosen a game that uses blank playing cards, rather like the shape of a cinema screen or a TV uh, that you might have at home. Now, the last few months, I've been using white cards like this to try out subliminal technology, similar to what we'll be using in the film. So, okay, we shall play again. This time, we shall play for some money, £20. What I'll do is I'm going to mix the lose card 
in with a whole load of other cards that say win. In fact, actually, why don't, why don't you mix them? Just do it so you can't see uh, which is which. So there's one lose card, and there are nine win cards there, so the odds are very, very much in your favour. OK? Yep. Lovely. Now, I will do nothing to influence you. I will certainly say nothing to influence you. One, two, three, four, five. Look at the backs of the cards, please. Two, three, four, five. OK, look at these. Now look at these. Now choose one. The one you want. That one there. Are you sure? Do you want to change your mind? Or are you happy with that one? Happy with that one. Sure? Yes. Oh, sure? You sound tentative. Go on, I'll try oh, that one. That one there. <laughs> Which one? That one. That one there. Sure? Definitely. Absolutely? Yeah. OK. What made you go for that one? What made you change from that one there? Because you gave me a choice. Oh, because I gave you a choice. Is it something to do with the position of the cards, maybe, do you think? I don't think so. No? OK, well, I did give you a choice, but I genuinely, at this point, do not know which is which because you mixed them. And no, you did actually <laughs> went for the lose card. That is a, well, that's a shame. That is a shame. But if you turn the others over, do so you don't think they're all... Do turn the others over. They do actually say win. They don't just all say lose. Good. <laughs> Excellent. Turn them over. Or they say nim if you're upside down. <laughs> um, <laughs> Excellent. I'm so, really skinned. Oh, no, it's a shame, isn't it? Well, the odds were <laughs> nine to one in your favour. Um, and I said I wouldn't say anything to influence you. And that's true, I didn't. Uh, but I did do something. I'll, ex I'll explain what it is, because it's kind of extraordinary. Um, if you just put that one, put it face down in the middle. If you have a look at the backs, they do all genuinely look the same, don't they? Yeah. But they're not. Look, if I give you this, this is a little UV torch. And we're going to dim the lights a bit so you can see this. If you take that and turn that on, there you go. I just start it on this one here. OK? And then just slowly move it up to this one here and this one here. Good, good, good. And this one. And then across. And then down this side. A little quicker, just so you can see all the backs. Yes? Good. Yeah. Now go to the one that you looked at, the one you picked. <laughs> yes? Now... And that genuine, that is genuinely on there, yeah? That is actually on there. Yeah. But be honest, you... Genuinely, I presume you couldn't see that. As far as you're concerned, they all looked exactly the same, yes? No, I can't see, yeah. You they can't, you can't see it at all. Without the UV light on, you can't see OK, well, let's play again, then. <laughs> and this time for a much larger sum of money. Do you want to stand up for me and come over here? <laughs> OK, you didn't win the 20, but now we'll play for £200. I and I will stack the odds much better in your favour. All right? Okay. And also, we're not going to play with cards now. We're going to play with people. Can we get the first five people on, please? Now, you'll notice they're all wearing T-shirts with a white rectangle on the front. You want to concentrate on the rectangles because they contain a powerful form of influence that I developed and will be using in the film we'll be seeing later. You'll also notice that they've got uh, numbers on them. I mean, it's the white rectangles that are important. Don't worry about what the people look like. We've specifically chosen people that wouldn't draw your eye by being especially attractive or anything like that, so none of them stand out. <laughs> they're sort of, sort of bland-looking, kind of... Uh, <laughs> Sort of lifeless, empty husks of people. <laughs> <laughs> There's no UV or anything here to uh, help you out, but you're looking at all the uh, white rectangles and the various numbers as well, and allowing those numbers to go around in your head too. Uh, can I ask you, please, help us to stand in a semicircle? And I'm going to bring you at the front here so you can see them all. All right, here are the rules of the game. Nikki, 19 of these T-shirts have win written on the back. Only one of them has lose written on the back. All right? Yeah. You are about to start eliminating. You're going to eliminate 19 of these people, just leaving one. Mm -hmm. All you want to do is make sure the one person that you leave isn't the one person that has got lose written on their back. <laughs> Does that make sense? Does the game make sense to you? Yeah. Yes? OK. So, obviously, the odds are 19 to 1 in your favour. Uh, if you do end up with someone that's got win on the back, then you will win £200. But you don't win the money if you happen to end up with the one person that has lose. Is that okay, all good? Yeah. All right. Now, so the rest of you just know ahead of time who's got lose on their back, and you know we're not going to sort of change anything. Um, I'm going to ask these guys to show you. So I'll turn you first around, Nikki. You face this way, face the front for me. Close your eyes as well, just so nobody gives anything away by looking. And I'm going to ask our helpers to turn around, please, so these people and everyone at home can see your backs. Turn around for us. And hopefully, you'll be able to see. If you look around, it might take you a moment. It might take a moment for the cameras to find it too. Which one of those has lose on the back? Good. All right. Now, I'd like our helpers to turn back around, please, first. And then, good. That's safe. Nikki, you can now open your eyes and turn back around too. All right. OK, so we now begin a game of elimination. We're going to do it in blocks of five. So you can name a block of five. That can be one to five. It could be six to ten. It could be 11 to 15 or 16 to 20. Give me a block of five. Go. Uh, no. Six to 11. Six to 11. Yeah. Six to 11. You are eliminated. Please turn around. You are eliminated. OK, well, the lose T-shirt is still in the game. We have another block of five, please. 
OK. Uh, well, that was actually six you eliminated there. Second block of four now, then, uh, right. then, we've, then we've done ten. I'll go 12 to 15. 12, 13, 14, 15. That's four of you. Could you turn around, please? 12 to 15, turn around. That is... No, they're all winners as well. OK, so the loose T-shirt is still in the game. Go. Which one? Which one? Which group uh, do you want to One eliminate? to five. One to five. You are eliminated. Turn around, please. The loose T-shirt is still in the game. You now have... These five left. You've got 16 to 20. Let's eliminate three of them. Give me three of those numbers. We will eliminate them. Uh, I'll go 16 to 18. 16, 17 and 18. Please turn around. You are eliminated. Oh! They are still winners, which means that loose T-shirt is still in the game and you're down to the last two. Can I ask you two, without showing anybody your back, just to come into the middle there? No peeking, just in case. Oh, very good. OK, you're down to these last two. You understand what we're doing? One of these T-shirts has lose on the back, one of the T-shirts has win on the back. You are now down to the last two. <laughs> I want you to be very clear, because this is for £200. <laughs> which person you would like to keep and which is the last person that you want to get rid of? You've already eliminated 18. This is the 19th you're getting rid of. Just tell me very clearly, who do you want to keep? Who do you want to get rid of? Um, I'll get rid of number 20. You get rid of number 20, so you are keeping number... 19. Sure? Yes. OK, all right. Number 20, you are eliminated. Please turn around. Yeah, of course. As you all saw, number 19, turn around. <laughs> 19, I'm so sorry. Thank you, Hoppers. Thank you very much. I'll ask you to make your way back. Thank you so much. You guys can head out. Thank you. That works, of course, because this white rectangle is made, it is designed to be subliminally more appealing than the other white rectangles. And thank you, number 19. You can now head off. Thank you. Round of applause, number 19. <laughs> We all get stuck in our belief systems, however sensible we think they are. To me, the New Age community is particularly guilty of not testing or challenging what it claims. And it was with this in mind that I invited a young woman to Epping Forest. Just here? Yeah, yeah. This is really nice here, isn't it? Lovely. <laughs> Can I talk to you a bit about what your beliefs are in in terms of spirituality. With something like uh, Reiki or psychic healing or crystal healing, if you don't think it's just a question of you, you sort of buy into it and believe in it and then it sort of works because you're expecting to, if you think it genuinely is more than that, how do you, how do you sort of grasp that? I've experienced uh, crystal healing. Um, I've experienced um, Reiki, oh, right. uh, which is using universal energy. Um, which probably a lot of people would be very skeptical to believe in, sure. and, and you know. But I'm basing my beliefs in facts, you know, and things that I have seen how they've created a progress in my life, or how things have shifted. I've seen this well, the results, you know. Mm -hmm. There is something I'd like uh, to try with you, and this is why I, I got you here specifically to talk about belief. And it uses an area of belief that I don't know, maybe is less fashionable than some of the beliefs that have been adopted in our culture now, as mainstream religion seems to be dying out. Um, would you stand up for me for a sec? Sure. And just come around there, and just like that, just there for me. That's great. And take your hand. And just rest that there. Excellent. That's great, and you can just stay like that for a while while I show you what this is. I'm going to show you something involving this, which is... A doll. But the thing about uh, this doll is that it, it, it doesn't, as it is, it doesn't have a soul. So we need to give it a soul for this to work. And that's what I'm going to do now by taking this. Are you happy if I use your ring for a second? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Just allow that to sort of go floppy down there. That's great. Thank you. And the ring goes into the centre here. And this makes it a soul for the doll. Just like that. Now it has a soul, and your soul, if you like. Stay there for a second for me. See, I just think it's interesting for me that we tend to believe what makes us feel good. If we decide that something is nice or makes us feel nice, that we decide that it's true. Which, you know, you could argue devalues the idea of truth terribly. Can you feel anything at the moment? What are you aware of? Um, my legs feel really heavy. Can you move them? Can you move your feet? <laughs> no? I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. See? 
You can't move them. You can move your arms, yes? Yeah. Just flap your arms a bit for me. Just do that. Thank you. Just so you can see you can move them for a moment. And then watch. What happens now? Can you move your arms? No. You trying? Yeah. OK, now look at me. This will be perfectly comfortable, all right? There's nothing unpleasant about this. Perfectly comfortable. I want you to count. Just try and count all the way backwards from 10 to 0 for me, out loud. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, that close. Can you talk? <clears throat> See, for me, it's all about questioning, I think, and not taking things at face value. Like, at the moment, you can't speak, but the only reason why you can't speak is that you believe that you can't speak because of what I'm telling you. And the interesting thing is that if I tell you you can speak, all that does is give you permission to question that belief, and then you find that you can speak. Can't you? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Because what we believe isn't necessarily real at any level. I mean, this certainly isn't, it's not even a real voodoo doll. You know, and even the real voodoo dolls we used uh, for healing, not for, not for putting curses on people. But what I did, I got you to invest in that belief, and one of the ways I got you to do that was by investing something of yourself in it, like your ring. Whereas, in fact, there's nothing in there. There is no ring in there. I didn't put your ring in there. You know, your ring's still on your hand. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> How did that happen? Stop this stuff. You all right? I did see him taking the ring and putting it into the doll. I, I can't explain it. He asked me to start counting and I just couldn't open. I couldn't communicate. I just felt my feet and my legs become very, very heavy. Um, as if they, they were just blending in with, with the ground, basically. It was a really bizarre feeling. When I actually looked down and I saw my ring on my finger, I, I could not believe it. And I still can't believe it right now. <laughs> I'm, um, I don't know how that's happened. <laughs> I feel really weird right now, actually. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you all for coming. Uh, what's your name? Cara. Stand up for me. Let me take your hands. Just press your palms together like that. And really press them together. And look at me right here. Then I'll just close your eyes for a second. The more you try to unlock your hands when I let go, the more you try to unstick them harder and harder, the more they keep on pressing, just like this. And the more you try now to unstick those hands, Cara, the more they keep on sticking. So what's going through your head? Let me get you a, a microphone. Thank you. Now, you're fully wide awake. Yes. You're not in some weird sort of zombie-like state or whatever people think hypnosis is. No. And they're genuinely stuck, aren't they? Yeah, when I try to move my hands, my arms are just like, no, nope, not having it. I'm sticking together and I can feel them pushing. And what's actually happening here, the idea that her hands are stuck, that I've given her, is stronger than her own sense, her own rational sense that she must be able to pull them apart. So how do you clear something like this? Once you've created it, how do you clear it? Well, there's two things. First of all, I could, I won't, but I could tell her that they're cleared. Or if something else happened that sort of took her mind off it, uh, it wouldn't actually kind of, you know, they'd probably just come apart anyway. Just take a seat for me, Cara. I just want to choose one of you at random. Just take a seat. I want to choose one of you at random. Just, ca Cara, Cara, throw this back and choose someone. They start to come apart. And there they are. <laughs> Let's move on to looking at the idea of a hypnotic trance. There, what's your name? John. John, have you come, John? Lovely to meet you. What do you do for a living, John? Um, I see. IT, excellent. Thanks ever so much for coming up. And look at me now. Look at your hand, and you just sleep. And back you go. That's good. And you can just let yourself sink right the way down, and right the way deep, and right the way sound asleep. 
So it looks very impressive. It's one of the most dramatic demonstrations of hypnosis to be able to hypnotize somebody like that. It's called a snap induction. What's actually happening there is I'm interrupting a, a, an automatic process for John. Shaking hands is something you don't think about. It's just this automatic process. And to interrupt somebody in the middle of something that's very automatic is very kind of confusing and bewildering for people. It's, it throws you completely. And at that point, you've become highly suggestible because you want relief from the confusion. So if you induce that confusion by interrupting an automatic process and then give them a specific piece of information like sleep, not everybody, but most people will absolutely kind of embrace that. So what you've just seen might have looked dramatic, but it was achieved through nothing more than ordinary suggestion. Uh, it would be a little impractical to do this with all of you, so with the rest of you, we're gonna take it a little bit more slowly. Now, under the 1952 Hypnotism Act, we cannot broadcast the complete process of hypnotic induction in case you, the audience at home, go under and can't be brought out. Close your eyes for me. But I can explain how it's done, and the key to this is relaxation and focus. I'm going to begin by creating uh, tension, so I want you to keep breathing normally, but to tense up, and then relax completely. And as you relax, you'll feel yourself just drifting down into this sleep state. Just my voice, just there in the center of your head. As you wonder just how deeply you can sink, and you can drift, and you can float, and right the way down, and right the way deep, and right the way sound asleep. Now that's all I've done. I've just got them very relaxed and focused. But the more suggestible people, when in that state, will begin to respond to my instructions. When your eyes are open, when I've counted you awake, your name will be gone from your mind. Now, I know this sounds odd. I know you know me. I'm Darren, but what's your name? Try, try and remember. What is it, if you really try? I'm a million miles away. I got, like, it's just nothing coming out. Nothing coming mouth. out, no. no. So, let's do this side first. Take a look at me, take a deep breath in. And then just sleep right the way back down, right the way They appear to fall asleep because I click my fingers. In reality, the mixture of my confidence and their expectation that that's what they're supposed to do is enough for them to take it as a cue to go back under. You'll find yourself absolutely rigidly stuck into position. Have you ever been at this sort of thing done before? No. Have you been hypnotized before? Or? No, I can't move at all. First time you've done something like this? First time, yeah. And what's, what's it like? What's going on? What's it feel if like? If I push at force of one, it's like it's pushing push back at two. These tests are helping me whittle down the number of likely candidates for tonight's experiment. Let me keep you, sir, and you. You're gonna stay here as well. And finally, I've identified four people who I believe will make the most suitable potential assassins. Now we're going to examine what hypnosis can actually do. How far will people go while in a trance? Are they genuinely under some influence or just playing along? We're going to find out with the help of a classic test from the 1950s. And to help me with it is Professor Zoltan Dianas from Sussex University, a leading expert in the field of hypnosis and its impact on the subconscious. Now, the question is, could we make a person do something antisocial or dangerous because we give them a hypnotic suggestion? And this is the test for that, the acid test, in fact. This chamber contains a foil-wrapped mannequin's head, over which a technician will pour highly dangerous hydrochloric acid. My four candidates are kitted out with safety gear and a beaker. I'm going to ask them to throw acid in someone's face. This exercise will show whether hypnosis can make you do things you wouldn't do if you were just playing along. If the subject is playing along, he won't throw the acid and he certainly won't carry out an assassination. Sleep. You can stand and sleep quite comfortably. Sleep. That's very good. Sleep. That's lovely. And sleep. You can stand and sleep quite comfortably. Excellent. Very good. In a little while, when you've woken up, we're going to put some hydrochloric acid in each one of those beakers. In front of you is an individual, a volunteer from the audience, we're going to call your target. And when you're awake, after a little while, uh, you will see a blue and white polka dot handkerchief. As soon as you see the polka dot handkerchief, blue with white polka dots, you will throw your beaker of acid into the face of the target stood opposite you. If that makes sense to you, I want you to nod your head if you understand that, if it makes sense. Excellent. Good. 
Without the candidate's knowledge, we've switched the acid for water, and they're now awoken. Eyes open, wide awake. Thank you. Lawrence, uh, if you can please take some of the acid and uh, give them each a dose in their beaker. Excellent. Good, excellent. So, Professor, how long have you been uh, working in this, in this field for? Uh, I went to uh, Sydney in the mid-'80s mm -hmm. for my master's, and uh, there was a master's by research. And my research was hypnosis, so that's oh, when sorry, I... Oh, sorry, you hang on just a, <coughs> just a second? Excuse me. Oh. Excellent. Four out of four. All four commit a highly dangerous act. Now, I only need two of them, so I've decided to continue with Alex and Chris. What happened? Uh, yeah, I just kind of instinctively did it. I, I just had the impulse to throw it in his face. The final candidates are about to be put through a challenge that could seriously affect their health, the ice plunge test, overseen by Dr. Stuart Derbyshire, Director of Pain Imaging at Birmingham University. So hypnosis can be used as a very powerful analgesic. If we tell the person the water is warm or tell them that their arm is anesthetized, they put it in the ice water and they don't feel the pain anymore. And importantly, you couldn't do this just by sort of playing along. It'd be pretty tough to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Well, let's welcome our two uh, strapping volunteers. We have Chris and Alex, everybody. With the water temperature approaching freezing levels, Alex and Chris can only keep their arms in the ice bath for just under seven seconds. <laughs> Both at about the same right time. About there, yeah. What's it like? Uh, horrendous. It pretty is very cold. cold, isn't it? Good. Sleep and stand and sleep. Sleep. This should change once the hypnotic suggestion is planted. Completely comfortable. You had to lower your arm in. Hold it there as long as you like. You simply will not experience any sensation of cold. It'll be completely comfortable feeling just a lukewarm room temperature sensation. Open your eyes, be wide awake. So just slowly, you can both of you just lower, lower your hand in. It's a very different feeling now, isn't it? It's like you're pushing past you know, the sort of plastic ice cubes that you can get. Now, what's it like now? How would you describe it, Alex? Um, it's like the water's not there. It's just uh, body temperature. Yeah, what's it like for you, Chris? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Pre-hypnosis, Alex and Chris couldn't keep their hands in for more than a few seconds. This time, they stay in for two minutes. So when I touch the side of the bath, when I grab that, the suggestion will clear. Look. Now what's it like? Oh, it's, oh, it's horrendous, horrible. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, um, I don't, yeah, I don't know why I've done that to me. So, no, but the moment you're, but look, I'm holding this here at the moment you're feeling pain, right? You are feeling pain in that arm, yeah, yes? But now, yeah. look, if I let go, yeah. if I let go, quite calm. The warm sensation returns. Yeah? yeah? Yeah, it's gone back to being warm. The thermal image camera clearly shows the effect of the icy water on the two men. The dark areas on their arms indicate the temperature has dropped dramatically, while the rest of their bodies register normal heat. Right, thank you. Alex, I'm going to ask you just to pop back in your seat there for a second. Chris, I'm going to keep you up here for a little longer. Throughout the evening, I've been assessing both candidates, and I've come to the conclusion that Chris is my perfect subject. There's something of a blank slate about him, which suggests a heightened responsiveness to suggestion. Now I need to confirm that he's at the top 1% of subjects, which is what the experiment requires. Look at me. And sleep. Sleep. Just stand and sleep quite comfortably. That's good. And again, you see, it's not just about your hands and forearms. This is your entire body. The brain controls the entire body. With the water temperature plunging further, I'm going to test Chris's hypnotic responses in a way that has never been done before. I'm going to get him to immerse his whole body in the ice bath. After only 15 minutes in water this cold, Chris's vital organs will start to shut down. After 30 minutes, he could die. But if through hypnosis, Chris is able to create the false reality that the water feels warm, he won't feel the pain and will be able to stay immersed in the ice cold water. So your heart rate at the moment is about 136 BPM. Is that normal? When he first gets in, there's a shock of getting in and it would go spike. And then as he sat there, it would gradually slow down and slow down until he dies. Excellent. <laughs> to ensure his safety, a team of paramedics is standing by. So just slowly, take all the time, just so it's nice and comfy, just pop yourself down. And control the breathing, just breathe in and out, and just take your time.
After one minute in the water, Chris's heart rate has dropped from 136 beats per minute to 107. At 50 BPM, the paramedics will be forced to step in. OK, we're going to bring you out, but before we do, what's that like at the moment? It's awkward, like, like Awkward this. position, but... <laughs> but, uh... But apart from that... Yeah, it's fine. Absolutely fine. The water is now 1.4 degrees away from turning into a solid block of ice, and his heart rate has dropped to 85 BPM. He's clearly very capable of dissociating himself from the freezing temperature. The test is a success. When I grab the side of the bath, the suggestion will clear. At the moment, it's completely comfortable. And watch what happens when I touch the side of the bath. OK, I would step out. We're going to wrap you up and get you into a special thermal tank that will just bring you back to a normal temperature. Thank you so much, Chris. I think we've probably found our best subject by far this evening. Well done. This is an experiment that hasn't been done before, Chris, so you've uh, just made hypnotic history there. Well done. People waiting around in train stations tend to slip into a state of limbo, which makes them very suggestible. This is the only time you'll ever see actors in this show. Oh, piss off, yo! Piss off! So staging a little incident allows me to impress a commuter with her own abilities. Excuse me, can I just ask you a few questions about what you just saw? We're filming a piece about short-term memory. Would you stand up for a second for me? Now, that whole argument that you just saw was actually staged for the purposes of this experiment. And the chap that had the argument with the woman, this is his wallet. Can you hold on to that for me? Both hands, nice and tightly. Can you tell me about what you remember? Tall man. Baseball cap, dark yeah. jacket. I think dark hair. Yeah. Not sure. Okay, do you remember any details about the guy apart from that? No. No. Okay. No. Alright. I want to show you how in fact you have all those memories, those details stored in your unconscious. I'll ask you some more questions. Don't try and answer accurately, just answer with whatever comes to mind. Alright? Don't even try and remember. Close your eyes for me. And I'm also going to place my hand over your eyes for a second, just there. Now just relax and go with me. Don't even try and remember, but I want you to tell me a little bit more about the details. He's wearing a cap. Tell me about the cap. Dark blue. OK. Something on the front. Something on the front. All right. Tell me what you see on the front. Zoom in on it. See it clearly. What's on the front of the cap? NY, New York. Very good. What's the jacket made of? You said a dark jacket. Leather. I want you to zoom in a little bit on his top pocket. On his top pocket. What do you see? A ticket. A ticket. What else? Pen. Fantastic. What colour is the pen? Zoom right in on it. Silver and black. Fantastic. What's he wearing underneath the jacket? Sweatshirt. Sweatshirt. What colour is the sweatshirt? Grey. Very good. Now, is there a detail on the sweatshirt that you can remember? Italian flag. Italia. Hold on. Open the your eyes. Look at me. Let me tell you, everything that you've said so far has been pretty much absolutely on the nose. I don't know how you're doing this, but it just has been. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something which will seem impossible. I want you to tell me the man's name. Now, don't try and guess it. You're just going to say what comes to mind. And we're going to start just with a letter, a letter for the Christian name. A letter will just explode into your mind. What letter comes to mind for the Christian name? What comes to mind now? P. P. Very good. So what, what might it be, beginning with P? Peter. Peter. All right, so just a guess, but that's fine. Now, the surname. We're going to get a letter for the surname. Imagine the surname written on a page in a book, all right? Just the surname and just the letter that begins the surname. What comes to mind now? Say it. Oh. Oh, very good. And is it a long name or a short name, do you think? Short. short name. One syllable, two syllables? One what is syllable. it? Say it, say read, it now. Read. Read. That, where's that coming from? Just, I don't know. You're just making it up? It's read. Just read, but you're just making this up. You don't know why, you've no reason, right? Let me tell you, this is going to freak you out. You've got his wallet in your hand. Open it up. I don't want to touch it. It's his driving license. Do you want to just take that out? No. You're right, you're shaking. Have a look at it. What does it say? Piers Reed. Piers Reed. That was very, very close. I didn't you're see really him shaking. that I can close. Feel... I'm sure I didn't see him that close. He asked me to shut my eyes and just go down the man. It was strange. I could see things that I didn't know I'd seen. It was like I was seeing it for the first time, like I'd honed in on it. I really don't know how I got that name. That's freaked me a little bit, because how do I know his name? I've, I've, I don't know his name. I'm shaking. I can't believe that has happened.